Let's check the live stream here, Claremont. We're gonna get started in a second. And it looks like we are live. Welcome everyone to the Buy It Back tour in the city of Claremont. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Levy Sun. I am with the San Gabriel Valley Mosquito and Vector Control District. And we're gonna go ahead and go around this group here to have folks introduce themselves. So starting with my left here, go ahead, Christian. Oh, Christian, looks like your audio has stopped. We'll go ahead and circle back. Hi, everyone. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Christian and I am one of the education specialists here at the district. All right, next we have Pablo. Everyone, my name is Pablo Cabrera and I'm the communication specialist here at the district. Okay, circling down, we have Jimena, go ahead. Hello, I'm Jimena. I um, do the surveillance work in the city of Claremont and I'm an assistant ecologist, sorry. Oh, no, all good. Um, go ahead, Stephen. Hi, my name is Stephen Gagos. I'm a vector control specialist too, uh, but I also manages the city of Claremont. And then we have Ali. Hi everyone, I'm Ali Gaspar. I'm the outreach assistant here at the district and I'm also currently in front of Claremont City Hall. All right, and we have a very special guest with us today. He's our trustee, um, Trustee Corey Kalakai. Uh, please introduce yourself. I think your, your audio is off there. There we go. Thank you, ah. Levy, right to the wire here. Uh, Corey Kalakai, I'm a city council member from the city of Claremont and I have the great honor and privilege of serving the citizens of Claremont on the San Gabriel Valley Mosquito Vector Control District Board of Trustees. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. Absolutely. So if you're just joining us, this is the Bite Back Tour in the city of Claremont. If you're watching, you're probably watching on our website, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, wherever you're tuning in, feel free to drop in a comment, a question anytime. For everyone that's here uh, through this video feed, please interrupt because it's sometimes hard to see who wants to talk and who doesn't. So if you have a question, if you have a comment, just jump right in. We're a group of friends. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just get started here. Uh, so first thing, West Nile virus. It is now considered widespread in San Gabriel Valley. So be sure to have that repellent handy and be sure to continue tip and tossing all that stagnant water weekly around your home. Today, for the next 25 minutes or so, we're gonna talk about some amazing things. We're gonna show you some great, um, cool things behind the scenes that our staff does, but two things that really stand out today that we've received from residents in Claremont in terms of questions is, do those mosquito traps I see at the stores really work? And two, I have repellent, but how do I properly apply it or which repellent actually works for me? So hang tight, Claremont, we're gonna to get to those. But first up, we wanna talk a little bit about what we do. So I'm actually gonna kick it off with Jimena from our surveillance department. Jimena, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do in surveillance and how what you, and how what you do serves the city of Claremont. Okay, hi, um, hello again. Um, so surveillance department does a lot of different things. Um, one of the most important things that we do is that we do routine trapping um, within the city of Claremont and other areas. Um, what we do is we place different kinds of traps out there that gives us information as to whether there's virus activity in the area, um, how many mosquitoes are there, um, and whether there's any risks that we need to be aware of. Um, we also do um, a lot of um, research. Um, so we need to learn about our environment, what's going on, what's changing over time, so that we can um, better assist and better inform our operational group so that they could take decisive actions to protect you guys. Thank you so much. Now, I understand you use a lot of traps. In fact, I'm looking at what's behind you and I don't think I've seen anything like that before. Do you wanna talk about, about what you're doing back there? Um, sure, so um, this is actually uh, set up for one of my research projects for this year. And um, what it is, is um, there are eight different BG traps. BG traps are specifically um, they're made to target 80s mosquitoes, which are the daytime biting mosquitoes that are probably bothering everyone out there in Claremont. And um, what happens is, um, you know, these mosquitoes are out. And when we go out and we want to do treatments, we need to know when they're the most active. That way we know when we can go out and do some sprays or so do some targeted um, communications events um, at the moments where we're best going to get the best results. 
So um, what I'm doing is um, I have this set up where um, each trap goes off at a different time oh. interval. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, collect these, take it back to the lab, and then look at how many mosquitoes were collected throughout different times over the um, last 24 hours. And so um, the way that this VG um, trap works, and I have an extra one here to show you, um, is it has a battery on the inside and um, it has this intake funnel where um, this fan that's on the inside is suctioning air. And um, we're gonna remove this really quick and see if we caught anything. Um, so you pull this up and you close it. And all, I'm not sure if you can see, but we do have some mosquitoes flying in there. Oh yeah. Kind of see them around. So there's some crane flies, but there's also the smaller ones are the mosquitoes, which you can see right here and right here. Um, so this is how we catch these mosquitoes. Um, and um, that's what I'm doing here in this area. We also have um, OB traps. Um, so that's a very simple trap. It's just a cup um, has a piece of paper on the inside. So mosquitoes, 80s in particular, like laying their eggs on textured surfaces. So if you think about like your plant trays, all your saucers, your fountains, they all have a texture on it. So this paper is textured and it's going to um, be placed in this cup. And then we fill the cup with water. And the 80s mosquitoes that are around in the area will come and they will attach their eggs to this paper. And then we can take them back to the lab and we can see abundance numbers and we can see where the mosquitoes are laying more eggs, which can translate into having more mosquito activity. Thank you so much for sharing that, Jimena. If you're just tuning in, this is the Bite Back Tour in the city of Claremont. Uh, you just heard Jimena talk a little bit about some of the research that she's doing, but also some of the traps she's showing you all how we trap for the 80s mosquitoes, the little black and white mosquitoes, sometimes called ankle biters. I've heard worse names for these mosquitoes from residents, but let's just call them these 80s mosquitoes. Uh, they're very pestiferous, they love to bite, and Jimena and her crew are out there monitoring for that, along with the other types of mosquitoes that can transmit uh, West Nile virus. So clearly, Jimena, there's a lot of data coming in. So before we get to how it relates to how we teach the kids, let's jump over to uh, Steven in operations. So Jimena and her team are trapping and getting data for you. How are you using that data to assist and protect public health? Hey everyone. Um, yeah, I mean, surveillance is, you know, they go hand in hand with the, each of our departments. Uh, the communications, the uh, surveillance operation, it's all part of uh, learning how to control these mosquitoes in the best we can for the people that live in the district. Um, you know, so if mana gets a trap, let's say it comes up with a mosquito, possibility you can have a lot of different species. Um, and those species all have their favorite types of water. You got some water, you got some clean water. Um, I have right here a little example. This is called a BMP. Um, kind of an unknown brain. Um, very kind of spooky looking, but it's full of holes of water. Um, so this is kind of part of what we do. We'll have to take a sample. Kind of see Steven, what your find. video is uh, breaking up a bit, but from what I understand, could you tell our residents in Claremont what BMP means or what it, what it is? Um, it stands for best management practice. Um, and typically uh, what they mean by that is it, a lot of these are used as almost like a filtering device for the runoff and the stormwater that comes in. Um, there's a lot of debris and trash that gets trapped, and this is supposed to help um, clear that out so the water can pass through freely, but uh, not every system works the best it can, and it can, uh, it can hold water, stagnant water, and that will produce mosquitoes. Um, so, you know, certain conditions like this, you'll find, you know, usually the Culex mosquito really likes a lot of dirty water, and that mosquito um, can transmit west now, so that's something that we really have to be a part of and, and keep note of and um, use that information we get from surveillance trap data and also bust out positives and act accordingly. Okay, so it sounds like you're taking that data, you're kind of figuring out where we have some high risk areas and where we have to look at some traps around Claremont. Um, so if you're just joining us, this is the Bite Back Tour in the city of Claremont. We're joined by staff from the San Gabriel Valley Mosquito and Vector Control District, but also a special guest of our trustee, Corey Kalaike. 
uh, who's also joined us to sit in. At any time, anyone, just jump in, comment, question. If you're watching online, drop in a comment or question as well. We'll be monitoring that and we'll answer them as we go. So let's go ahead and switch over now to education because we know, all right, surveillance, you're doing your part. Operations, you're out there in the public sphere protecting public health. Um, but now how do we educate the young minds of Claremont and throughout San Gabriel Valley? I'm gonna turn it over to Pablo and Christian on this. Uh, go ahead, how did you guys do that? Hey guys, I'm gonna hand it over to Christian. We're out in the field here to give you a live demonstration. Go ahead, Christian. Hi everyone. So yeah, so what we do is we actually um, give students tools um, that our vector ecologists use in order to um, have some surveillance of the mosquitoes in the area. And so kids actually can use 21st century skills and practice those science skills that we really want them to learn um, through our citizen science programs as well as our classroom programs. So I'm going to do a demonstration. As you can see, this looks really similar to what Jimena was showing because we give them these tools. So um, they get a cup like this, and it also comes with a little spike. Um, and depending on where they're putting it, they can use it or not. I'm not gonna use it for this demonstration, but this cup, like Jimena said, is to uh, try to capture 80s mosquito eggs. So what students will do is they'll get this. They will put this OB position paper, it looks like this. It has texture, just like Jimena said, and they put it into the cup, just like this. And you might see it says agent with a number. This is their agent number. So they have an assigned number so that they get to uh, give us the data and we know exactly where, uh, what agent is providing it to us. So once they have the paper in the cup, they just fill it with water, just like this. And they wanna rotate it so that um, it doesn't pop up, but this is where the mosquitoes will actually lay the eggs. So there you go. They'll put it like this and then they'll just place it somewhere um, that's a nice shady area, which is where mosquitoes would be looking to actually come and lay eggs. So they'll lay them there. After a week, um, mosquitoes will become adults from egg to adult in five to seven days. So we don't want them to have this out for more than a week. After the week is over, um, hopefully, or maybe not, some mosquitoes have laid their eggs and then the student will just take out the paper, let it dry, take some pictures and submit it to us. And that is how we will be able to um, also enhance our information in terms of knowing whether 80s mosquitoes are in that particular area or not. So this is totally available to um, students in Claremont. And um, what they can do is their teacher has to sign up through our program. So it's vectoreducation.org and there they'll find all of our programs including this grid program and i will say that um this operation mosquito grid uh, citizen science project is actually uh, inspired by jimena's work she actually helped us create this in the first place so this is a great collaboration between all the departments so that we can get tools and education to the students so they have real life application of what it's like to be a vector ecologist or even someone who works in the field uh, with residents, but also um, folks who are actually doing the inspections around properties. So if you're just watching, this is the Bite Back Tour in the city of Claremont. Uh, if you have any questions, whether you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, or on our website, drop in a comment or question below and we'll monitor that and answer it as we go. We also have a very special guest, our trustee, Corey Kalakai. He's joined us. Um, so at any point, anyone, feel free to drop in with comments or questions within our group. But let's go ahead and move on because I know I teased this in the very beginning. Uh, do those mosquito traps that you buy at those stores really work? There are thousands of them out there. I know bug zappers are very popular. And I know Pablo decided to set one up just to see if it indeed does kill or trap all the mosquitoes. Uh, Pablo, why don't you show us what you caught? Yeah, so I've had the uh, mosquito trap set up here. If you've been tuning in with us uh, during these bite back tours, I still left it plugged in uh, for another week. Left it here. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug it and see if we caught any mosquitoes in the trap. As you can see, it looks like this. 
if you unlock it from there, it has a little fan tray that you kind of click out. And I have a piece of paper here to see what we catch. So we did catch some things. Some are still alive, as you can see them flying out. And as you can see, there's um, these are clearly not mosquitoes. That is not a mosquito. But we do have some. Um, a handful. These are uh, Culex mosquitoes right here. Here's another that looks like a midge, which is not a mosquito. Commonly mistaken for a mosquito. That's actually a good one to point out. This right here is a mosquito that I'm holding. And this one right here is not a mosquito. See how its legs are forward. But I think the real emphasis here is, even though we may have caught a small number of mosquitoes, um, the majority of what we see here are other insects, also beneficial insects. And these beneficial insects are really helpful to our environment, even as small as our gardens or our backyard. And if we have this set up for one week, we're catching this amount of beneficial insects on a weekly basis. Uh, as opposed to the smaller uh, number of mosquitoes. So really you're making a, a negative impact on uh, the insect uh, population in your backyard or in your area that uh, are actually helping with uh, some nuisance insects or providing food for birds or spiders or other insects out there. So really when it comes down to it, you're catching more beneficial insects um, with these traps rather than actual uh, mosquitoes and eliminating any mosquitoes because something that we've emphasized a lot is mosquitoes come from stagnant water. So if we're able to eliminate those stagnant water sources, we can eliminate these mosquitoes and hopefully keep all of our beneficial insects healthy and keeping us healthy by uh, creating more um, uh, pollinators in our environment and uh, flourishing. Awesome, our thank you so much, Pablo. And um, something to really note here is this follows, follows in line with the other studies out there that looked at mosquito traps like this. And turns out most of the mosquito traps you got by, especially those pure light bug zappers, they kill off 99% of beneficial insects and maybe less than 0.5% of actual mosquitoes. So if you think about it, mosquitoes don't care about the light. They care about what we breathe out, CO2, and the warmth coming off of our skin and off our bodies. So if you're out there, you're competing against that light zap, that light bug zapper, you're gonna be the likely target of mosquitoes out there. Can I jump in just one second as well? Um, so another thing to also keep in mind is that a lot of those traps that you purchase are actually attracting mosquitoes to that trap. They're meant to attract all kinds of insects. So if you don't really like insects coming and bothering you while you're having a barbecue, it's probably not a good idea to have one of these in your yards because you're actually calling not just the insects in your backyard, but all of the insects surrounding in the neighborhood to come onto your yard and hang out. That's a very good point. And yeah, we have a lot of Claremont residents calling us and asking about these mosquito traps in the past couple of months. So hopefully this has been helpful to you all in learning more about the mosquito traps. If you're just tuning in, this is the Bite Back Tour in the city of Claremont. Uh, we just talked about what we do as a district, some things to show about mosquito traps, they don't really work. And now let's move on to something pretty important and that's the use of repellent. A lot of residents have asked us, well, what repellents should I get? I have this blank brand from with this ingredient. Does it really work? I'm gonna go ahead and toss it over to Allie who will give us some insight on how to find repellent and more importantly, how to properly apply. Hi Levy, thank you. Um, yeah, a lot of residents come to us with these really important questions. And the main thing is to follow the four main ingredients um, recommended by the CDC, which are oil of lemon eucalyptus, also known as CMB, um, DEET, the carotene, and also IR35. Um, and you find those ingredients pretty much on most repellents um, in any major um, grocery store or um, just regular store that you see with an outdoor section or a gardening section. Um, and of course, you can always order online if you need to. Um, the trick is, though, is to see it on the front of um, your repellent label. Um, so you'll see it here, and it'll tell you the percentage ingredients. 
Now the percentage ingredient is mainly to let you know how long it's going to last. So if you read the directions on the back of the label as well, it'll tell you how to apply it and how long it will last. Um, so similar to sunscreen, we ask that you apply it similarly. And I'll show you right now. Um, so I have exposed skin on my forearms and my neck and my face right now. So I'm gonna apply evenly all over my arm. And then when it comes to the neck and face, you wanna make sure that you spray it into your hands and then pat accordingly. And I'm wearing a mask, so I'm only gonna get the top and bottom part of my face. And the same thing applies to children. Um, so if you're applying to small children, um, make sure that you're spraying it into your hands as an adult and then spraying, or I'm sorry, then applying them on their face as well. Yeah, please don't spray your kids in the face. Do not. You do. We've seen that, <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but, um, but thankfully, Thankfully, we also even have um, our repellent zone, which um, cities and other um, co coordinators can have us come out and teach everyone how to properly apply repellent. We've had a great success so far um, with Sonelli Park and also with um, the Santa Fe Dam in educating the residents who show up there for their events. Um, and also, just to reemphasize the ingredients, because we get asked this a lot, I'm going to see if I can share the screen here. Um, but can everyone see the ingredients on your screen? Yeah. Awesome. So these are the four ingredients that we get asked a lot. What are the four? So to emphasize again, DEET is the gold standard. Uh, people have known it. It has gotten better. It used to feel like you're putting on gasoline on your arms because it's very oily and doesn't wash off very easily. But in the past couple of years, they reformulated it. So actually it smells more pleasant. It applies more dryly. Uh, Keratin is also up and coming. Oil of lemon eucalyptus, also known as PMD, um, is derived from the plant. But word of caution, it cannot be used for children under three years of age due to the higher toxicity level. And then IR3535 is, um, doesn't have quite of a foothold in our US market, but it's, also, but it's very popular in Europe. So keep that in mind. If you want to take a screenshot of this while you're watching, go ahead. This video will also be archived later on our YouTube channel. So if you're just watching, this is the Bite Back Tour in the city of Claremont. And we just talked a little bit about repellent. Um, with the remaining time we have, I do want to emphasize some of the other things that people may not be aware of around their home where they can make their property more bite free. So you're all aware of the stagnant water. No stagnant water means no mosquitoes. You know about repellent. There's one more thing, and that is the dense vegetation that may be around people's homes. We've gone out to Claremont and visited quite a few properties, residential properties, and noticed that while the residents are very aware of not having stagnant water, they look around their yard and it looks like Jurassic Park. You have these lush tropical landscapes, big bromeliad plants that are tropical. And because of how these plants grow, they provide plenty of shade and humidity for these mosquitoes around our property. So yeah, you may not be creating many mosquitoes off your property, but because you do have that dense vegetation, it may actually um, harbor mosquitoes. So I'm gonna try and share one of my other screens here. Let's see if this will work. So something like this you see on the screen, um, something that we, this is something common around San Gabriel Valley, not just in Claremont, but even something like ivy is known to harbor a ton of mosquitoes uh, during the day. So if you have any ivy, um, luckily most residents don't like it. They try to get rid of it as best as fast as they can. But we highly suggest you either scale it back to where you can see the wall or remove it completely. There's also um, bromeliads. Uh, these are the plants you might find at some home improvement stores in the garden section. The cups where they hold the water normally is, are perfect places for mosquitoes to lay their eggs. So the question that we get asked next is, well, what do I do? Um, I don't want to have a barren landscape of just rocks and, so uh, and sand. We say California native plants. Plant what works with our environment and plant what actually increases the biodiversity and a healthier environment in Claremont. So, bio uh, so California native plants are extremely easy to grow. You can grow them mostly actually year round uh, from what we were told by our experts at the Theodore Payne Foundation. And they can look quite beautiful around the yard and they can draw in a lot of beneficial insects around your home. Everything from damselflies, dragonflies to even um, beetles and other insects. And it, because there's not a whole lot of dense vegetation holding in the humidity, um, you're not 
attracting any mosquitoes. So anything to add from anyone else in the group before we make our rounds to end off? Uh, Cause we'll be doing a round of closing remarks from folks in a second. Um, just real quick, I wanna let everyone know that we have a lot of um, good resources on our website that can give you ideas on how to make a more beautiful um, ecosystem in your backyard that happens to be bite free. Um, so you can check that out at sgvmosquito.org. And if you wanna sort of replicate this very beautiful dense vegetation without the mosquito bites, then um, we have great ideas for you on there as well. All right, thank you so much, Ali. So let's go ahead and do our quick round of closing remarks. If you're just watching, this is the Bite Back Tour in the city of Claremont. It's been so great to be with you the past 30-ish minutes, uh, but we're gonna sign off now. I'm gonna go ahead and go around the screen here. Um, I see Christian Pablo. Christian Pablo, you guys wanna say anything to the residents of Claremont? Yeah, I just wanted to encourage teachers and um, even like summer program uh, leaders to sign up for any of our programs. Uh, they can go onto vectoreducation.org to sign up and, um, and check out all of our programs. All right, thank you. Anything from Pablo from the back or just a wave goodbye? And just a reminder too with uh, the mosquito traps, while you might be catching some, you're catching more beneficial insects than anything else. These uh, mosquito traps, they are expensive too. It's something that is free and you don't have to go out and buy or have plugged in all the time. It's just tip toss and protect, something that we've been emphasizing a lot. Eliminating the stagnant water is gonna eliminate any mosquitoes in your yard. Awesome, thank you so much, Pablo. Next in my screen of the Brady Bunch here, we have Ali. Hi everyone, in addition to wearing repellent, just a reminder to tip out of um, stagnant water and resources, whether they're children's toys, um, bowls, plant saucers, or other things that you might find in your garden. It's important to make sure that they don't retain any water. Awesome. Thank you, Ali. And then next, uh, we have uh, Stephen. Everyone just want to say thanks again. Um, and also just thank you to residents of Claremont as well, just for doing their part, you know, and cleaning up the property, kind of looking at stuff that they might have not looked at, you know, a couple months ago due to the you know, if they're having mosquitoes in the area, um, you know, we do our part here in the field, but, um, you know, it's also a lot of work kind of just cleaning up your home and making sure everyone's safe. So thanks everyone and um, hope to see you soon. All right, thank you, Steven. And Jimena? Hi, yeah, um, final words for me would be, um, please continue to um, communicate with us. You know, let us know if you see something that's spectre related, you see a dead bird out there, please, um, you know, report that to the West Nile hotline um, and we'll go out there, we'll test it out. Um, if you have a lot of mosquitoes flying around, please give a tip on our website. Um, where you're out there, you're experiencing things and we can't go to every single house. So we really um, depend on you a lot of times to um, get to us and let us know when there's a problem. Okay, and finally we have our trustee, Corey Kalake. Would you like to send some uh, departing words for our show today? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Levi. Um, let me begin by thanking our staff for putting this together. They've been coming up with new and creative ideas of reaching out to the public. And um, so thank you, to, thank you to all of you for putting this together for our residents today. Um, we didn't even get onto other vectors to include ticks. Um, it's another thing that we monitor as a district. And I've done a ride along and we've gone through wilderness parks in the region. And um, we talked about these overgrown plants, the, the bushy uh, vegetation along the sides of roads can have ticks on them. And when you brush by them, they'll grab onto your clothes or grab onto your pet. And that's how we end up with ticks. So that's another thing to be even as we're talking about mosquitoes today. Um, but hopefully um, you've been given some great ideas in terms of education about the, the mosquito issues, um, what you have to do to try to prevent mosquitoes. And furthermore, for some of you young people who are thinking about careers in the future, what you'd like to do, hopefully if you've been inspired today, maybe these are positions that you'd like to pursue when you're ready to join the workforce and get involved in, in uh, mosquito abatement. So um, again, I want to reiterate the points that were made. Contact us at any time if you have mosquito issues in your neighborhood, if you'd like to have um, a, a, a technician come out and consult with you, or even if you'd like to have a presentation at a community organization um, or with friends and neighbors, um, we're, we're happy to try to accommodate those opportunities to get the word out. Um, with that, again, thank you all for being here. And I'll just conclude by saying, uh, help control the mosquito population, dump and toss standing water uh, around your uh, 
homes and, and businesses. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And with that, that concludes our show here in the city of Claremont. If you want to tune in next week, same day, Thursday at 11 a.m., we're going to be in the city of South Pasadena. Thank you so much to everyone who's joined us today, including our trustee, Corey Kalakai. And stay healthy and stay by free, everyone in Claremont.